Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney. It's 5.40 p.m. on Friday the 23rd and I'm making a video for Sunday because uh, I still have some calls to make. It's going to be a late one. It's going to be a late one. All right. On this channel, we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the answers they need from an employment attorney. Also on this channel, we have crazy hair, apparently. We have a question here from YouTube user Dantana Slim. Dantana Slim, what a name, who asks us, Hi Vincent, if the vice president from the company where I work told me in a one-to-one -one meeting that I deserve a five, which I presume is the highest rating, in my annual, annual review, and then I later submitted my disability discrimination claim, and he denied saying it, and he actually gave me a four, and I have the original re conversation recorded, can this be part of my lawsuit? Okay, so, a couple of things to think about there. And this is going to be a conversation you have with your attorney. <sighs> so that individual, that vice president, may not have been discriminating against you because that vice president was saying you should be rated a five. The best of the best. As good as it gets. Now. You also made me, right? Somebody might think you're amazing at your job, might even say that and still engage in discrimination. I'm not saying that this vice president isn't guilty or not guilty. Part of your claims, not part of your claims. Obviously, I don't know. I don't know anything about your case. Um, and also, it looks like this came before the disability discrimination, so maybe maybe the vice president wasn't even aware that you needed accommodations or that you had a disability. So there's a lot going on there. But... If he was aware that you had a disability and needed accommodations at the time when he gave you the five review, that may not be fantastic in all scenarios. In some scenarios, it may not be fantastic for your disability discrimination case if you're pointing at this vice president as one of the bad actors. Because you're going to go through all the work of proving this guy gave you a five out of five as high as it can be, as good as it gets, blessed, right? Like, like he, he's he's speaking very well of you. He's giving you the, the finest rating you can possibly get. And if you're saying, well, he's discriminating against me, and you go through all this effort of getting a recording admitted to evidence so you can prove he gave you a five, well, that does have some negative impact on your narrative that he is the one discriminating against you. I don't know if that's what your narrative is, but if it is, that's something to think about. Now, if what's actually going on here is you have other people who are the bad actors in your case on the disability discrimination front, I'm guessing they might have failed to accommodate you or targeted you on the basis of your disability. It could have been someone else, right? And then you bring your claim, and the VP, who was very cool with you, lowered his rating from five to four, then I think you can argue potentially that that is an act of retaliation. And it might be worth your time to do so because you're not diluting the discrimination component of the case. Now, as to whether or not you'll be successful in arguing that's retaliatory, remember an act, a, a, a retaliatory act has to be targeted at you because you've complained and you engage in protected activity, right? You complain. And then it has to be something that could dissuade you or someone else from filing a discrimination claim in the future. And there's going to be some question, I think probably argued in the case law here, does dropping you from a 5 to a 4 and 4 still being a very good rating, does that qualify as retaliatory? Could that dissuade someone from filing in the future? Now, I would argue yes, that it could because, listen, people fear getting their ratings dropped, and I think that's enough. But... The employer may argue, hey, four is still pretty good. And we don't really give anybody five. So, like, this isn't the norm. Like, everybody else got a four. This is not negative. Sure, this VP said you deserve a five, but we don't give anybody five. So, we don't think this is an act of retaliation. And we got the data to back it up. Out of the last hundred reviews, we gave three fives. Fours are great reviews. Fours qualify for a raise. Fours do not qualify for performance improvement plans. There's nothing negative about four. So we don't think that giving you a four would qualify as retaliation because we don't think it would actually dissuade someone from engaging in 
the protected activity of complaining about discrimination. Is that a good argument? It's the best argument available to defense counsel based on what I know right now. And it has legs. I'm not saying it's a winner. I'm not saying you're going to lose the fight. But they're in the fight on that one. Right? It's not a sure thing that you're going to win the idea that this is retaliation. Better, perhaps, for you that this this VP has lied about the conversation. Because now, if they're hanging their hat on something the VP is saying, the vice president's saying, right? If the vice president's testimony is valuable in some way, well, listen, you have that retaliation argument, but over and above that, you also have a way to poison the validity the evidentiary value of the vice president's testimony. Okay, cool. So you never said that, huh? Cool. Okay. Thank you for saying that under oath. Here's the video or the audio recording of when you said it. Boom. Now, is that going to be admissible? Maybe, maybe not. Bunch of bunch of wrangling to be had about that. But presuming it's admissible, you've won quite a miniature victory in your case. I apologize. And even if it's not admitted, let's say you go to court and you try to admit this this recording and the other side jumps to their feet and they fight you and they're like, judge, judge, we need to approach the bench. This should not be admitted. Don't put it in front of the jury. Awesome. Because now you've just heard the jury. Uh, the jury has just heard you trying to give them the best evidence possible, which is an audio recording. The only thing that's better than that is a video recording. And, and that. That's a, that's a true statement, I guess, in 2024 still, except that, like, deep fakes are going to start destroying the value of audio and video recordings very rapidly. So that's going to be a fun new world we live in. But um, they heard you trying to bring in the recording, which they believe they can trust as a jury, and they heard the other side being, no, 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 you can't play the recording. No, judge, please stop them. Don't let the jury hear the recording. It's a bad look. This is a bad, bad, bad look for the defendants. Bad look for defense counsel. So, I think what I'm saying in the longest way possible, interspersed with bouts of coughing, is that you have potentially, first and foremost, a way to attack the VP's credibility, which could be really valuable. Now, the retaliation claim is also potentially viable and also potentially valuable. I'm not saying you shouldn't plead it. I'm not saying you shouldn't pursue it. Um, but I am saying you may not want to tip your hand about having the recording until you actually have to, because if you're lucky enough to have that VP lie about what he said, that's going to come in handy later on. If that VP's testimony is, is an issue at, at trial if you get to trial, which is unlikely, less than 2% of cases in this field actually go to trial. But you still need to prep every single case like it's going to trial, right? So, you know, don't disclose that you have the recording too early because he could make a statement somewhere along the way. Heaven forbid, maybe in a sworn statement, which would be like, mm, chef's kiss, right? Then you've got, you've got something loaded just for him at that point. Um... I was going to add something else. I think that might do it. Good luck, Nintana Slim. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Helps the channel to grow. Share our videos wherever you think people will need them. Be super helpful. Thanks, everybody. Take care and uh, hope you're having a great weekend. Oh, I went to go see a doctor about this cough. And they were like, no, we're overwhelmed. You can't, you can't see the doctor. So I got to go see another doctor. What an insane world we live in. Take care.